All right, so before we begin, I just want to say I am not a regular tech channel. I'm a mobile music producer, and so 97% of all of my content has something to do with that. And even when I review stuff like hubs, I'm always doing it from the perspective of a mobile music producer. So if you're not into that, do not subscribe. <laughs> Hello there, my awesome viewers, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host, and you're watching Hack Attack episode. And in this episode, I want to show you a solution for headphone portless USB hubs. It looks like this. You only need one of them. They all range in prices and in some functionalities, and they should be fairly easy for you to get. So if you ended up with a USB hub that you like, but you can't travel with it because it doesn't have a headphone port, well, this is the solution for you. Yeah, let's talk about it. All right, so I'm gonna start by taking this one out of the equation. It's a Swedish brand called Luxor Parts, and it's made by this chain of stores called Shello Company. So you can only buy them in Sweden, you can't order them anywhere. The reason to why I bought this one is because of its size. If you look at this, it's actually the tiniest one out of all of these headphone port dongles, because that's what these are. So this one, most of you won't be able to buy. However, if you have access to Amazon, then you can get any one of these because that's where I bought these. The brand name is Ugreen, and the reason to why I went out and got a Ugreen product is because my viewers have been tipping me off about Ugreen products for years. And I thought, you know, I'd make some of you happy by just getting one of them. It doesn't cost much. It's for adding a headphone port to a hub or a computer. It is a plug and play thing or USB class compliant, meaning you don't need any drivers to hook this up and use it. And the same goes for all of these hubs. All you do is plug it into a USB-A port, plug your headphones into it, wait a few seconds for it to activate, and then you're done. You can just raise your volume, lower your volume. It's like having a headphone port right there built into your system. They don't cost much, pretty much available everywhere where you can get Amazon products. So I went out and tried to get the cheapest one I could get because I know a lot of people just love saving money because you don't have a lot of it. And I know how that feels to not have enough money. It's a stupid headphone port dongle on a USB-A connector. All you do is plug it into a USB-A connector, plug your headphones into the other end, wait a few seconds, and there you go. So, like I said, I chose this one because it's cheap. So, yeah, I don't know how this is gonna fare. Why don't you ask me in six months and let's just see how it's been performing. Now, the last one I wanna show you is probably not gonna interest most of you. Most of you are just gonna go and get either the Ugreen one or this really silly cheap one. But there are those of you out there probably who still uses old types of PC headsets or computer headsets. Then you need this type of connection instead. As you can see, it's got two headphone ports. Well, one of them is for headphones. The other one is for a microphone. So if you have a headset like this one, this one's from Sennheiser, well, then the other end is gonna look like this. Well, you just plug red into red, which is for microphone, and green into green, which is for headphone port, and there you go. Now you have a headphone microphone port for your USB hub. Now, I also wanna add that I really just got this because I wanted to just test one out since I have one of those headphones. Now, I function tested all of these headphone hubs because I wanted to see what happened when you connected a headset to it that had more features like volume controls, play stop button, and also microphone. And I also wanted to look at a spectrum analyzer to see if there was anything weird going on in the spectrum when the microphone was active. And I found some interesting results. Starting out with the Luxor Parts one. I know you can't get this one, but I still tested it and I wanna talk about it because I found it interesting. You see, I tried playing a YouTube video and stop and play works. I even tried playing some music, stop, play work, but volume controls 
do not. So you don't have access to that. Now, when looking at the microphone in a frequency spectrum, there was nothing really weird going on except from a spike around 20 kilohertz. And that's kind of outside of the range of the human hearing, but I've seen this a lot with these types of products. Still, nothing weird, everything works, microphone works. You don't have access to volume controls, but that's fine. Next, I tested out the U-Green one, and this one came out green across the board. So you basically get access to play stop commands, but not only that, you also have access to volume controls, which is really nice. Now, when testing the microphone, there was nothing weird going on there either, apart from that, well, very familiar 20 kilohertz spike. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Microphone works, nothing weird going on. You get all the functionality, very good, green across the board. Next, I checked out the Envil one, and here it gets a little bit uh, gritty because you don't have access to play stop commands or volume controls. So you can't raise or lower the volume when you're using an EarPod headset or something connected to this thing. Nothing works. And when I tested this with a spectrum analyzer and activated the microphone, the audio input, well, it turns out that there's something weird going on in the lower frequency spectrum. It's outside of the range of the human hearing, but it's still there. And I'm used to finding stuff like this in really cheap stuff, which is why I'd never recommend cheap stuff. You never know what you get. So yeah, weird stuff going on in the lower frequency spectrum and no functionality when using something like EarPods or anything with remote on it. Lastly, I tested out the Sovereign one, and this one I couldn't really test out with an Apple EarPods because, I mean, it's the wrong connection. Yeah, well, I knew I wasn't gonna have access to play stop commands or volume controls, but I just wanted to see if the microphone was giving off any weird vibes, and it doesn't. It looks fine for what it is. And remember now, it's a different microphone than the one that I'm actually using on the Apple EarPods one, but I couldn't see any weird things going on in the frequency spectrum spectrum. So very basic functionality. Which one is the winner here? Well, I would say that the U-Green one is the winner. It's got a good enough build. It's all plastic. And I must say the case is longer than I would have wanted. And I actually prefer the Luxor Parts one over the U-Green one much thanks to the size of the Luxor Parts one, but I guess it's fine. And then, of course, with the Ugreen one, you get full access when connecting a headset with a remote, at least an Apple one. It might differ from other brands, I do realize that, but I had access to volume controls, play stop commands, yeah, green across the board. It's a clear winner for me. So that's the one I recommend. All right, there is a better solution than just sticking another dongle into a dongle and then that into your smart tablet and or laptop or something, right? It, that solution would be to get a hub with an actual headphone port on it. And the reason to why I never did that is because I always intended this to be my studio hub. And what do I have in my studio? I have a professional sound interface. And that professional sound interface has two headphone ports with proper preamps in them. So I don't need headphone ports. But whenever I'm traveling, it would be nice to bring the UniHub with me. And in those cases, I've just taken this thing, plugged it in, and I'm ready to go. I have a headphone port on there. So when I'm on the train, it's a perfect solution. Well, as perfect as it can get when you got a dongle stuck into another dongle. In the end, what I really wanna say is, I hate this. This has to be the worst invention of the tech industry ever. I mean, it's perfect for them, lucrative for them. <laughs> I hate dongles so much and I just want it to stop. This feels a lot like hell. I, I hope that we can get to a point where stuff really does get wireless and where the wireless is good enough. I mean, MIDI-wise, for MIDI controllers, it's been good enough for quite some time. Audio-wise, it's getting better, but I hope development on that side goes faster because it would be nice to let go of all of these dongles. Now, if you wanna support the work I do here on the channel, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't wanna do that because you don't like me or my content, you wanna give me a thumbs down, don't do that. Thumbs up like this, and then you put it in your, as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Yes. Yes.
yes. We're gonna make billions of dongles. Billions of dongles. Dongle, dongle. Everybody now. Dongle.